Is that your prayer this morning? That say, Father, I know you are always there for me. You are there to help me. Even when there's no one that is there. You are always there for me. celebrate the choir this morning for that wonderful rendition. Please let's celebrate them very well. Amen. God bless you. Choir. Now today we, one of our fathers is celebrating his birthday. That the Akabi is celebrating his birthday today. So after the, the sermon, he will come for his dance because he's a, uh, you know, he's a traveler. So we need to agree and allow the Thanksgiving to come today. Okay. February 5th, the first Sunday in the month of February, the precious Sunday. Uh, that's the day we are going to welcome our precious uh, powerfully. That's the day we are going to also give them a name. They will no longer become, become freshers. They will also adopt a name. Achieve a shout hallelujah. So, don't intimidate them all. Uh -huh. So, they will also have a name that day. And please, uh, the academic court, both the present and the past, should please meet with them to tell them what we used to do on that particular day. You are the one that we officiate that day. So, you sing, you form your own choir. And remember that last year, was it last year, we used to have every of the levels minister every month. So we're going to start with them in February. And in March, the achievers will minister in March. The second Sunday in March, the achievers will minister. And in April, what's the name of the family? Eh? Overcomers in April. In May, which family? Oh, Loruko. <laughs> eh? Those are the people in foreign level now. Uh, choosing generation. Okay. You have forgotten your name. No problem. So, okay, you, there's 500, right? What's the name of your family? <laughs> okay, the FYB in the month of. June to minister. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you send forth your word to us today. And your name alone shall be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. Late last year, I started a series on relationship and your future. I want to continue today. Trusting the Lord that. I will have the grace by his mercy to complete the series. But whatever happens, the Lord is still good to us. For Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. For Samuel 18, verse 1 to 4. By prayer and fasting, the book of 1 Samuel cannot be in the New Testament. You will find it in the Old Testament. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. When David has finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own life. Saul took David that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Verse 3. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own life. Verse 4. And Jonathan striped himself of the rope that was on him and gave it to David 
and his armor, even his sword, his bow, and his girdle. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Relationship and your future. We established before now that no man can rise alone. No man is an island on his own. You need someone to survive, to succeed, and to be connected with destiny. For every promotion, there is a promoter. You need to be associated and to belong to a family to enjoy the dividends of that family. We said that relationship is a close connection between two people or more people. The people you are connected with will determine the attitude you will go in life. Your connectivity determines your accessibility. Your connectivity determines your feasibility. The Bible says when a man walks with the wise, he becomes wise. And when he walks with the fool, also he becomes fools. Become part of them. We also mentioned the type of relationship. We first look at the family relationship, which we were able to, you know, conclude the other time. Today we are looking at friendship and acquaintance. Friendship and acquaintance. And from the passage we read, we saw the example of a godly friendship in the life of Jonathan and David. Godly friendship is purposeful, focused, and vision driven. Any friendship that is not purposeful, that is not vision driven, is not the kind of friendship we are talking about. Beloved of God, God wants us to relate with each other so that we can get to where we want to get to in good time. Someone said, if you want to go fast in life, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with people. The attitude at which you will go, or the further you will go in life, is determined by the company that you keep. Ask your neighbor, what type of company do you keep? What is the response? If it's not talking, it's a suspect. There are several people in the scripture. It was because of whom they are connected or associated with that make their journey faster into destiny and to glory. That make them to reach where they are going. Let me also establish this as we go further from here. That you as an individual, you are not a perfect being. Stop looking for a perfect friendship. Because you yourself, you are not perfect. Stop looking for the best friend because you yourself are not the best friend. Every man still carry certain weakness or weaknesses in them. But yet the Bible says, iron, sharpen it, iron. We are men to sharpen each other and to make each other better than we started together as friends. We have examples of friendship in the scripture. That were built by men and they were ushered into greatness. Despite life challenges, they were able to enter into their fulfillment. We saw one example is Ruth and Naomi. Naomi's children died. Ruth, be one of the wife of the, of the dead uh, son, followed Naomi out of a comfort zone to a new land. That friendship translated into greatness. And Ruth was part of the genealogy of Jesus Christ. She was an alien, but because of connectivity and friendship, she became part of the commonwealth of Zion. We saw also Daniel and his three companions that were taken to the strange land. Daniel chapter 1 and chapter 2. It, despite the fact that they were in a strange land where no one was watching over them, they decided to live purposefully diligently and they became you no know, wonderful people powerful people in a strict land the same thing the bible also captured friendship 
that destroy visions and future. Such is Dina and Shechem in Genesis 34. Another example is Ammon and Jonadab in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 19. Another one is Jehoshaphat and Ahab, 1 Kings 21, 22, verse 1 to 40. And 2 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 1 to 9, verse 1 and to 19 to verse 2. This is also friendship, but it's not purposeful. It was based on things that are not of eternal value. So let's consider friendship for greatness this morning. We are going to be looking at the life of David and Jonathan. And we're going to be taking a clue from Ruth and Naomi also. And by the grace of God, we trust the Lord to bring us to a point where we are going to see that friendship is needed for us to get to where we are going. God does not create anyone to exist alone. That is why you are not the only one in the world. If you can do it all, it means you'll be the only one here on this part of eternity. But because you cannot do it all, God created others around you so that you can both we can both work together to build a place where God can call his house. Also, people of God, I must say this as you proceed that because God is calling us to a friendship, does not mean there will not be obstacles and challenges. There was obstacles and challenges in life between Jonathan and, and uh, David. Yet they did not allow that to affect their relationship. They were able to overcome their challenges and they move on together until they fulfill God's purpose and intention for their lives. There's a saying now that says, The rich befriend the rich, and the poor befriend the poor. How many of you have heard that before? great but in this case it was not the same it was the rich that sought his life out to reach out to the poor because david was part of the people in the low class lowest class from the, from the clan that is not being recognized at that time and yet jonathan being from a wedding home and from a royal family was able to associate with david and pray for somebody today today but in the name that is above every other name, that which God will put in you, that we connect you to men of great honor and authority, it will manifest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friendship, purposeful friendship, friendship that are godly. Let me say this to all that number one, friendship that are purposeful, friendship that are for greatness. Number one, they are friendship that breaks social status. They are friendship that breaks social status. David did not fake his lifestyle so that to attract Jonathan to become his friend. He maintained who he was even when he was meeting with Jonathan. And the Bible said Jonathan loved David. It was not David that first loved Jonathan. It was Jonathan that first loved David. David did not go and borrow clothes. To impress Jonathan so that they can become friends. Today we see a lot of friendship that you know we not you will not stay where God has put you. You can do everything possible because you want to belong to a class that you are not. We saw today that David remained a bushman and a village man. You will know that all the days of his life he has always been in the wilderness, catering for the the sheep and the flock of his father and yet when Jonathan sighted him something drawed Jonathan to David it was the grace of God can you lay your right hand on your head this morning and say in the name of Jesus Christ grace that attracts honor rest upon me grace that attracts visibility rest upon me in the name of Jesus Grace that brings access. Rest upon me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What brought Jonathan to David was grace. Was nothing but grace. Was nothing but the release of God upon the life of David. That brought mighty men to him. He did not go and beg them to be their friend. He did not go and borrow anything to put on to become their friend. But something in his life. Draw men of honor to him. 
So what you should pursue if you want your life to draw men of honor is to ask for his grace. Friendship for greatness break social status. Are you here today? You find it difficult. God has blessed you. You now find it difficult to relate with people. Okay, The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 11, the race is not to the sweet, the battle not to the strong. The food you will serve is not to the wise. Many of you, while you are in school, you look at some people as refrats. People that are not that they are non entity. As if they are the one that killed Jesus. And you look down on them, and this one cannot amount to anything. They are they are small. They are not out of my status. Don't you break in school? You know the kind of friend you will call. You go to item seven. And you are your friend. You say, ah, hey, let's say, ah. That is not that to make friends. That's not that to be a friend that will lead others to become great in life. May I also inform you, as many of us here that are privileged to come from a wealthy or royal family, that God has blessed your home, you have all that you needed in school. God did that for you. So that you can impart others. God has blessed you that you can become a blessing to others. God has blessed you that you can locate the David in your environment to lift that David up. The investment of, of Jonathan in David pay up at the end of the day for the children and the children, children of Jonathan. And many of you here, if you have it here. Because you are in relationship, you are in friendship with somebody, and you have issue. Ah, what you tell me? Good morning, good morning, Lagerawa. No friends again. And you close that door of friendship. You lock the door, and you throw the key in the Red Sea. You don't know tomorrow. Maybe by tomorrow, the next office you will open. You make that person you have locked the door against. That's why I want to encourage you this morning. Don't underestimate somebody sitting by your side. Because you don't know that person where it's coming from. You don't know the kind of grace that person carries. It may not be from a rich family. It may not be from the family that I have to do. It may be something that you will need in life that will take you to from where you are to the next level. It may be in his hand. And this is the person you look down upon as if it does not exist. Some people will come to church to even greet the person they are sitting together with. It's a problem. But this generation is, is now wow. You'll be waiting for somebody sitting by your side to greet you first. This is the generation where everybody na mates na equal. If you don't greet me, I don't greet you. You are closing door against your going forward because the person sitting by your side was brought there by God. It is not by accident, it's by grace. So even if you have any cause to go out of any friendship, please let it be a common, a mutual agreements don't shut the door be careful the way you close the door of friendship be careful because tomorrow when the die is cast it may be the only person standing in days and season where you are faced with life and death it may be the only person available to help or assist you and you look at you and say baby told you only can come Jonathan was, his soul, his own soul was drawn to David. Irrespective of his royal attire he was putting on. And he came down from his throne to become friend with David. What is at work? Grace. Something drew Jonathan to David. And that was the grace of God. 
and Jonathan not, did not because of that also misbehave. He cautioned himself. Ah, the time is running. Number two, friendship for greatness is oneness in spirit and love. The Bible says Jonathan become one. Jonathan become one in spirit with David. And he loved him as himself. <laughs> so it means whatever Jonathan wanted for himself, he wanted for David. May I ask you, even the person you call your friend, do you want what you want for yourself for him? Okay, let me do something here. Who have a friend here? Your best friend is here. Let me see. You have your best friend in church here. Okay, come. Come, my brother, come. Where's your best friend? Come, two of you, come. Let's do something quickly. Are you in the microphone here? Just come and stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Do you know him? Very well. Do you know him too? He's your friend. Do you love him? Very well. Okay. Are you Yoruba? Okay, I want to sing a song. Come closer. Eminima Koko Jerry Sagbara Muluwa Eminio 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 Eminima Koko Jerry Sagbara You say it's number what? Number two. <laughs> but I think you said you love him. Yes, no, but number one, number two. Number one, number two, I just said they are both the same. Gold is very on silver. Yeah. <laughs> but you want the gold. You want the gold. Yeah. You want silver for him. No, it's, it's possible you also have the same, uh, gold actually. It's possible. <laughs> Now, okay, two of you went for an employment interview. Okay. And two of you made it to the final, final stage. Okay. And if you take one person, okay. what will you do? Uh, that one... You have been looking for Joe the past 10 years. <laughs> okay, that one is not an issue actually. If it's that we get there and uh, his own qualification is better than mine. It's free to have the job. This is my friend. No. They will not look at. Let's be patient, please. They will not look at which qualification is the best. You are sure that for you to make it to the final stage, two of you are. Okay, if it's that stage, actually, uh, for the friendship we have been building together, it's possibly good for you. Because I don't want it good for you. It's going to remind me, it doesn't matter how. Okay, what will you do? I will just, I will depend on God. Yes, it's like, Seriously? Yes, nah, because... You already depend on God before you get to the final stage now. <laughs> because if it's, the, if it's the first person that gives you the job, I will just say, well, mm -mm. come from God. See, this is what I'm saying. Two of you, of this, of one of the four, Two of you made it to the you, two of you made it to the last stage. You are qualified. That is why you made it. One of you will only get the job. And you met at the same time. Can't you resolve and say, talk or le or you can do it. It's deep. No, we have to we have to discuss about it. Have to discuss. No, we will leave the work and go home. If you go home, you have met two of you have missed no, the job. We'll be like, we'll get back to the very simple thing. Or if this person is if this is this brother is a politician. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Now, what Jonathan did, how 
I wish I have time to expand shades. There are three things that identify a king or someone that is a prince. Number one is the royal apparel. What Jonathan did was to relinquish his position as the heir apparel to the throne of the land of Israel and gave it unto David. It was not by compulsion. It was not by coercing. It was not by dribbling. It was not by manipulation. It was not by who is qualified and who is not qualified. In fact, by that standard, David was not qualified. But Jonathan releases the garment of glory and honor and put it upon David. Just because of one thing, he loved him. He did not go be, did not, did not stop at that level. The Bible says, look at the word the Bible you said in verse 4. He striped himself. The word stripe means everything that represents him as a prince was removed and put upon David. In other words, David became the first son of Saul by adoption to be qualified to become the heir apparent to the throne of Israel. Just because of love. May I begin to ask us today. The person you said you love. That is your friend. Can you do such for him? That is the test of friendship. Can you go extra mile. For the sake of your friend. To ensure that his well being. Is your utmost concern. To ensure that that person. That you call your friend is living well. Even when it is possible, living well more than you. How will you feel like if you are Jonathan? How will you feel if you are the mother of Jonathan? And you get to hear what your son did. What will you do? We saw how Saul reacted to it when he had. But let's say you are the mother of Jonathan. What will you do? What will you say to him? Jonathan did what he did because of his love for him. A mutual love. A love that comes from inside. Not a love based on what you have. David did not have anything to bring to the table in their friendship. Today, the people you work with is because of people that can bring something to the table. But we saw in Jonathan, David has nothing to offer. And yet they were friends. What motivated your friendship to this point? As I conclude. Let me use number three to conclude. Sharing and identifying with others. Friendship for greatness will not be ashamed to be associated with people from humble background. David that doesn't stay in the house, always in the bush, always looking rough and smelling the odor of the animal. And a man from the palace will come and embrace him. Hold him tightly to himself. Because of love. Can you eat with such a smelling person? Jonathan eat with David. With his smelling clothes and his smelling body. And did not say, it's not for one say, you are doing what? You are smelling. How many husband and wife here can withstand the mess of the other partner? Mama Adewara, Baba wa fa so fa, Lori Onje, Pe Don Jem, Kilesi. That 
that your friend you are eating together? And you know that your friend he can eat jones? You know the smell for jones is is a, a your tony? And just yeah, far, full, full. Where you are eating? You know, say, oh, daddy, will you not abandon the food and go away? But Jonathan stayed with David. Why? Love. As I conclude finally, either friendship, just friendship, or you are in courtship with somebody preparing for marriage. Will you or can you lay your life for the person? Can you deny yourself of opportunities for the sake of that person to rise? Are we not having competitive spirit even though we call ourselves friends? Are we not competing with each other? It number one. It number one. Only number two. Oh, it's a only cool number one. Okay. 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 He did not look at his own side of pain, but they consider our own suffering. Okay, let me give you Jesus to come and die for you. That's why you and I, we are enjoying the grace of God here now. Somebody paid the price. There's nothing free in free time. God paid the price by sending Jesus here that we can have access to life. And God is saying, will you give the same access to others around you? How many people have you shut the door of benevolence unto? Because of your own personal need and selfishness. How many people have you rejected that came into your life to find succor? To, you know, that came, they were under the sun, they came to find a shelter under your umbrella that you have sent away. How many lives have run to you for help and assistance? To you, why we say, ah, come about salary, you me at you, so I want to long. And you deny them of that little help that will make them never to forget you in life. How is your friendship going? Is it actually your friend? Do you actually love that person indeed? Or because you are, it's because of what you are getting from that person? Are you in a parasitic relationship? Or what again? Mutual relationship. Where two of you benefit. May God show us mercy. In the name of of Jesus Christ. Can you bow down your heart this morning and speak to God? Evaluate your friendship. Are you actually in friendship that are purposeful or friendship that are not purposeful? Are you into a friendship that is building you up or that is building you, building, pulling you down? Are you in a friendship that is pointing you to Calvary or in a friendship pointing you to hellfire? Are you in a friendship that is after your growth and development, after you becoming a better person? Or in a friendship that is after you becoming a second class citizen? Ask the Lord today if you need to break away from ungodly friendship that will not help your life and destiny. It is this morning you must make a decision. Are you in a friendship, in friendship with people that will draw you to a place of prayer, place of Bible study, or they will draw you to a place to go and drink, to go and commit error? Or go and commit evil or fraud. What kind of friends do you keep? Ask the Lord to help you. Greatness is only found in purposeful friendship. When your friendship is not purposeful, greatness is far. Can you ask the Lord, Lord, help me this morning? I receive grace to break away from every ungodly friendship in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive grace to break away from every ungodly friendship. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal Father. We worship and glorify your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This is our prayer that you will help us to examine critically 
our friendship. Where we have failed, where we are not performing up to the level you desire. Lord, that you will help us to make amends today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.